Good morning, folks. San Diego event today, and we are very excited. We'll go over a CME that thankfully is not aimed at Earth. We got lucky again. We'll also dive deep on the tornado outbreak last night, look at evidence of a roaring river on Mars in the past, and finish up with one on the magnetic field impact on the biosphere. We'll start with our star, and solar flaring was lower, as expected. We've got a sizable plasma filament facing Earth on the south, but you may notice one erupting on the western departing limb. We briefly had geomagnetic storms yesterday due to CME impact, but they're waning back now. Here is the filament release on the limb, a spectacular lift and release as trillions of tons of plasma tear away from the sun's corona. You can compare its size to the Earth's scale there on the screen. There is a blistering CME that erupted with a significant amount of force and caused a long duration flare in its wake. Most CMEs release from the sun around 500 to 1,000 kilometers per second, slowing down to 400 to 700 kilometers per second by the time they reach the Earth. This one released at over 1,700 kilometers per second and would have likely still had a speed well over 1,000 kilometers per second when it reached the Earth if it had been aimed our way. Very glad this one didn't explode about two or three days earlier when it was facing Earth. Carrington event was expected to have released near 2,000 kilometers per second, so this was a pretty powerful event. Many of you know it was a tornado fest in the major storm system blasting across the plains last night. You can see it here swirling with a storm production tail on the southeastern side of it, the wind convergence. In addition to the energy and speed of the wind, the warm, moist air from the Gulf met with cooler, drier air from the north, right at that convergence line, and they had to rapidly equalize temperature, moisture, and electric potential. Rapid change releases energy, that's basic chemistry, and we got the storms we saw last night. Heading out to Mars, they are seeing evidence in layered rock of a roaring river, far surpassing any power they could have imagined on Mars before. They are not only jaw-dropped by the evidence of the former waterway, but several of the scientists are already saying those rocks probably contain fossils of microbial life at the very least. Lastly, folks, won't be anything new for veteran observers, conceptually. EMF hampers bees' ability to find pollination points and to complete the job. Whether it's from human electromagnetic fields, space weather, or the changing magnetic field of Earth, this is not the first time we've seen this impact on bees, but every time, it reminds us of the subtle ways that Earth's food chain is in jeopardy, naturally and with the ongoing pole shift, and also because of our technology. We greatly appreciate your support. Lots of good links to check out below the video. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 7 a.m. on the West Coast. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.